presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robert, how you doing, man? Yes, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, uh, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling a problem with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What is going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on. Um, obviously, big news coming out. We'll dive a little bit into it. Uh, but as Powell saying, inflation is kind of a bit more aggressive or longer, uh, has more resilience than they anticipated. Um, so this is kind of telling people that rates are going to stay longer, or excuse me, higher for longer. Uh, right now, you can see the market not really know what to do with that. We have the ES Mini sideways right now, up at 0.12%. Uh, the Russell uh, down about 0.3%. NQs up the same amount, and then the Dow up 0.38%. Of course, gold is uh, doing quite well today, trading at 2,409. You actually had Citigroup come out today as well and said that their new price target for 2025 uh, somewhere about halfway through, is going to be around the 2800 uh, level, which would be uh, fantastic for all the gold holders out here. Uh, Barrick, of course, did not do too well today. Uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit going forward. Silver down slightly at 1.12%, and then copper settling out uh, about $4.30 on the contract, down about 1.58%. And then oil, uh, actually sideways today, trading at 85.43 uh, currently. Now, it's interesting with some of the bonds we have going on here, right? Uh, you had some strength in them today. Obviously, these things, you know, want higher rates. Uh, remains to be seen kind of how that shakes out. I know a lot of people are moving money into bonds currently, um, especially with just the high rates that we have now and the idea that uh, rates will stay higher uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, but anyways, we can move on from there. Tesla down one, uh, down 3%, 156. This has really shot ARK Investment 2 in the foot um, pretty heavily. Uh, be interested to see if they have anything to say about this, but obviously they're, they're huge bag holders uh, regarding Tesla, and they're not doing too well with it right now. Still Dynamics down as well at 139.91 uh, in the dollar, off from that 107 mark, trading at 106.27. Uh, still want to see it move. 2107, or we're expecting that to happen. Uh, Disney at 114. Apple, some news. SMCI, uh, this is such a crazy chart. It's a super microcomputer. So we got cooking on it. Um, anyways, up 8.16% today. Uh, things off is high, somewhere up north of 1,000. I can talk about that when the charts come up. Uh, essentially, they're introducing new IoTs and embedded systems. Uh, it's going to use Intel's INTC Atom and Core Central Processing Unit. Uh, this is low power, high efficiency. It's going to be for compute performance. I don't understand the hype around IoT, but uh, every new product seeks to join it in a major way. Um, of course, edge applications are massive in uh, you know more industrial kind of senses, but um, for the common household user, I, I don't see a use in IoT, but... Um, that doesn't matter because the market does. And we've seen things like SMCI. I mean, look at that chart. I mean, it's from December. Man, if you just had, <laughs> I mean, what are we trading at? Like 235 sometime mid-December, uh, all the way to its high of 1229. We're trading right down now at 954. And I think a lot of analysts uh, see that going back up to around the 1000 area. Um, some interesting news in that way as well is AMD. Uh, it's quite cool. Let's take a look at where we're at right now. All right, so trading up 2.21% at 163.85. Uh, it's quite the dip, too, from 227. Um, they have just unveiled uh, new AI chips for business PCs, which is fantastic. 
Um, it's called the Ryzen Pro 8000 series and the 840 series. It's gonna be available later this quarter. Um, commercial PCs equipped with the Ryzen AI enabled processor will often offer next generation performance for artificial intelligence enabled content creation, collaboration, data analytics workload. And I still think this is a little bit ahead of the curve um, where not too many people uh, are <laughs> using any kind of like AI that's so intensive for business at this moment, you know, beyond, you know, content generation uh, from open AI. But if a company like AMD can get in here for the consumer market, again, we've already spoken about how NVIDIA, uh, a lot of their major drivers are going to be for training these AI models and AMD kind of um, allows them to be maintained, right? Especially on a commercial level. Uh, so if they can get ahead of the curve on this, which I think they are, um, they can have a pretty good sizable share of um, chips used for AI in business, uh, which I think is pretty solid. Let's see if there's anything else interesting with it. That's about it. When it starts shipping, of course, we'll follow that as well. In the realm of AI, Microsoft has invested about 1.5 billion in an Emirati AI firm. G42 and takes that's a minority stake in it. Um, you know, there's projections going all the way to 2030 that you're going to have AI, you know, making up something like 15 trillion of the global GDP. Uh, so it makes sense that you have these companies investing large, large chunks of money just to get a small sliver of it. Um, and I, I do see it being pushed, I would say, uh, to be successful. Let's talk a little bit about this. Microsoft invests 1.5 billion in United Arab Emirates uh, based artificial intelligence firm G42. That gives the U.S. tech giant a minority stake and a seat on the board. Under the partnership, G42 will run its AI applications and services on Microsoft's cloud computing platform, Azure, to deliver AI advanced solutions to global public sector clients in large enterprises. Again, if you've been you know, with us, this is one of the things we talked about that Microsoft is so solidly positioned for, right, is going to be basically storing a lot of this data on um, certain portions of its Azure platform. Uh, Microsoft President Brad Smith will take the seat, said we'll combine world-class technology with world-leading standards, just typical CEO talk. Um, but again, I, I think this is what's so solid with Microsoft going forward, is when you're using this AI, that information is stored somewhere, it's sent somewhere, it's processed somewhere, it's not being processed natively on your PC, so where is that going? And, you know, that's a big question, obviously, security-wise, but also you just want to know what's happening in the operations of your business. And this is where I think Microsoft is, is just poised very well because you already have a lot of integration um, in businesses with Azure. And so it would be kind of a seamless um, transfer. And for people who aren't in Azure, maybe say like AWS, and we have been seeing Amazon invest a bunch in AI as well. And I would reckon it's, it's probably in the same way that they want the data being stored and processed uh, somewhere on their servers um, regardless, the point is, is the more Microsoft can get into that and have these early AIs that will be used in enterprise uh, solutions, if they can store that data on Azure and process it there, um, I mean, it's huge. And, and really, the upside for Microsoft will, will be massive for that. Um, take a look real quick what Microsoft's trading at before we go to the break. Trading up just moderately at 0.7 at 4.16.58. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Basil Chapman. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. 
But how are you to gather all of this information in one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Let's take a look what we got over here. This is the opening call newsletter by Basil. Now, I've said this many times before, but I will check out what he's doing when I'm posting other newsletters and all of that. Um, and it is super interesting. What another very cool thing that he does is every Saturday, he can tell you a little bit more about it. Um, but every Saturday he releases a uh, long form video kind of going over things that he's looking at, which I think is a really uh, unique kind of offer. You come here, this is the plans that we have. Here's 149 uh, for one month, 695 for six months, and 1195 for the whole year. That is a 33.17% uh, savings. Of course, if you are a first time uh, subscriber to the service and for whatever reason it doesn't work for you, that is okay. Uh, we have a 30 day money back guarantee for all first time subscriptions. Basil, how are you doing? Hi, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good. And uh, just watching the uh, vis uh, the vicissitudes of this market, we're watching this bouncing up and down. And uh, I th I just thought you spoke about my newsletter. I don't usually talk about this, but what I do every day for subscribers, let me just drag this across, is I have an overview that's based on the Dow, but it really applies to the other indices because I talk about them. This is from yesterday. I said Dow closed down minus 248 to 37,735. And then uh, I discuss all the, the, the negatives and positives. And what I said is that this is an inverted Chapman wave Roman candle. What happens in this particular technique, how the price had to uh, rally and hold very well on a certain level. And then I also said so that if holding a plus 90s or more after 1.45 p.m., uh, the chances are good that an up close, uh, of an up close increases. And then I tell you what will happen if there's a negative action. And I also discussed that within this, you can see there are a couple of uh, prices here. And I spoke about this when I did Tom's show yesterday, that there are a whole bunch of support, Chapman Wave automated support and resistance levels, and that the Dow was at support levels on the very short term. And you can, and there's a technique that I use called Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Support Line. This dash line here said that it went right to the line yesterday, and that there was a good chance that there would be a bounce attempt. So we've got that. This is alive right now. We've got a little bit of a bounce going on up 163. So that's part of what I look at. But this is what I thought I'd mention because I haven't gone through this with you. I've spoken about it with Tom and during my show. Uh, for a long time, but especially over the last week, I've been saying, whoops, I didn't go, want to go there, I want to go here. Um, I want you to talk about this indicator that I developed years ago. 
It's the nine period moving average and the 14 period moving average. When the nine goes above the 14, that's positive. When it goes below the 14, that's negative. I call it my, uh, this is the technical tool of last resort because it's the one that waits the longest before it gives a confirmation of a signal. So it gave a, t a beautiful turnaround. It was around about the 27th of October, the Dow. But on the 3rd of um, November, that nine period moving average crossed positive. And look at this. It's been positive all the way through until right there. Mm. And that was on the 4th of uh, 4th of April. I would say that's quite a few months of one technique showing you that even those dips, you could have been holding along. And look what happened here. It turned negative, And now the 9 period moving average has confirmed the sell mode in the daily, not the weekly chart yet, but the daily chart of the Dow. The S&P waited, waited, waited. And then finally the other day, look, from the, I think it was the 6th of November. Yep, the, the 6th of November, green nine period moving average, just turned pink and remains pink. That's the first time it's done that in months and months. So I, I'm really uh, very much aware of what this indicator can do, but it is only a daily indicator. It doesn't say everything's going down. It just says on the, on the shorter term chart, you start to get sell signals right across the board. The QQQ. Uh, there it is. It went uh, it went pink a little bit, and then it went uh, green. Green is good. Pink is no, is negative, and now it's pink. And look at this IWM. So these are the four key ind indices. Very negative right here on the daily chart. And we waited and we waited. Uh, been negative the uh, uh, the semiconductors. Uh, looking at it as if this t this was a top right here um, on the seventh of March. And finally, yesterday, it turned pink. And that's uh, that, to me, is really important. To, the two most important uh, indices that I'm, or sectors that I'm looking at now to kind of confirm that there's a, a chance that, uh, at least on the short term, we're starting to see a rollover is the IAI, which is the, when did I hit the, yes, IAI is the broker-dealer uh, ETF. And that's finally turned down. So that's just saying to me, you got to be somewhat careful right now, a little bit cautious. The uh, bonds are going, the bonds are going down. The yields are going sharply high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could turn right now, but that to me says uh, you've got to be careful. So what's also fascinating is that there are some stocks that are holding well. For instance, to this morning we went long, um, we went long a Dow stock, and it's actually it's been holding very well as the markets have been pulling back the last couple of days and that's just a good sign it says maybe that can go even higher but you were talking it's fascinating you were talking about a microsoft just a moment ago so microsoft we've been long since 338 it went all the way to 430.82 on the on 24th of march and it's pulled back but it's been really reluctant to pull back sharply but it did yeah. break key support of 1416 yesterday it dipped to the 1413 area, mm -hmm. and today it's up a little bit. And that's just telling me that even here in the sectors that have been absolutely outstanding, there is some uh, there's some weakness creeping in, and that has to be dealt with over the coming few days. And also, fascinating enough, you I often hear you talk about uh, SDLD, which is the uh, Steel Dynamics. Yes. So Steel Dynamics made an all-time high on the 1st of April. And lo and behold, that 151.34 all-time high, the same day had a 149 round number open, and it's trading now at 140. That's um, it's just interesting to me right. that these round numbers really are quite potent. We had Nvidia, Nvidia had an all-time high of 974.00, all-time high on the 8th of March. It's trading now at 879. It's just kind of gone sideways. It's been really struggling. And then just a whole bunch of Caterpillar. I mean, can you believe Caterpillar has <laughs> a 382 all-time high, but the day before it had a 381.00 around number high, and yet it's trading down to the 362 level. So I, there, there are a lot of indicators that I like to use, and I discuss them, as you mentioned, on, on a weekend. I have my overview. It's about an hour long. And I go through all these different points, and we've been looking at the, what what does it mean with all these round numbers? There was a round number in arm holdings. There's been a spectacular stock in the semiconductor area, all time high on the 12th of um, February. It, yeah, look at this. Let me just pull that down. It hits 164.00. Yeah. 
Here it is at 123. So I kind of like to look at so the stock we chose today actually had a couple of round numbers at the lows. Uh, so now we're going to see if there's a chance that it can actually have a rally based on that. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'm going to be sticking around to see that. No kidding. Yeah, arm 164.00. But wait, that's not the only ones. I mean, MSTR, uh, MicroStrategy had a 199. Yeah. 1999.99 high, but that day it also had a 1953 uh -huh. open round number and 1942, and here it is down to the 1281 level. Hmm. Well, Basil, thank you very much. Very interesting stuff to consider. Yeah. Basil, thank you so much. Guys, check out the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com and check out Basil tomorrow at 10 a.m. Right thank you, Jacob. Take care now. Have a great day. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Open Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right, that means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the Live Trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service, so don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. It's Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are still sideways, uh, most of the market for the day at least. Uh, trading at 5,111 in the ES Mini, 1986 in the Russell, 17,934 in the NQ. Oh. About 0.31%. And then gold, we are up 
12 percent at 2410 roughly take a look over here this is the ord hyphen oracle.com now tim ord is a regular guest on the tom o'brien show we have all uh, come to really love his analysis um and tim ord we also have a few of his webinars uh, his archives on tfnn.com under the services tab strongly recommend checking those out that is a uh, great source of information, especially if you're working on becoming uh, a technician yourself. I believe we have Tim on the line right now. Tim, are you there? Yep, I'm here. So, uh, what do we got? Actually, uh, well, actually, right now uh, we can look at gold, but really the thing to look at right now, I think, is actually the market. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I can kind of, I don't know where to, we, we can. Um, well, actually, okay, in a nutshell, I did go long on Friday, and the reason why I did get some panic in the ticks and trend on Friday's close, and I did, uh, on Friday, we had a close on the trend of 2.5, and we had a 433 down tick reading. Well, that's a bullish combination, it's just a low of as early as that day of the reading to as late as two days later, which will be today. And so I'm thinking today is probably the low uh, that we can go through that, and I'll, I'll show you my analysis. But, you know, I'll start with chart one. Give me one second to get it up. All right. Let's see here. <clears throat> All right. We have chart one up. This is SPX. Right. It's the SPX, and it's actually a monthly chart. And I don't know, but for the last couple of weeks, I've been saying we're probably going to stall in here. And the market finally did. And the reason why it's just a simple method of anyhow the middle, the second window, or yeah, the second window down from the top is a monthly SPX. And every time you get the trading range, uh, how you pronounce this, see, uh, if you get 50% of the trading range above the upper Bollinger Band on a monthly time frame, usually the next month is consolidation. We actually had that, uh, it looked like uh, February didn't quite do it, and I was kind of looking at it, but eight, or, uh, March we did. We closed more than 50% above the trading range, above the middle Mulder band, suggesting that April could see a consolidation. And that's the reason why I kind of got out of the market and waited for that consolidation. So now we're consolidating, so where are we going to go from here? Let's go to page two. All right, give me a second. Or chart two. All right, we have, uh, give me one second, actually. That is chart three. Well, let's see, chart three. Um, I see, that's my fault. Let's get it out. This is chart two right now. All right. Perfect, got it up. All right, chart two. This is a weekly uh, SPX middle window, and the window below that is the XP, XPX VIX ratio. And the only thing I want to point out on this, this is a weekly time frame. As the market goes up and the SPX VIX ratio, which is a window below the SPX, and if it makes lower highs as the SPX makes higher highs, that's an intermediate term bearish sign. And all the pink areas identify those times where the market went up and that ratio would made higher or lower highs, where the S&Ps made higher highs. Over the last, um, I don't know, several months, the SP is making higher highs, and that ratio is also making higher highs. We did have a pullback here, uh, but I don't think there's anything meaningful. The reason why the VIX never responded, really, until the market really went down, didn't respond going up into the high. It stayed uh, making higher highs as the SPs were making higher highs. Now we got a pullback. Well, the VIX does go down when the market uh, – or the VIX does go up when the market goes down, and that's what we're going – going right now and so if, let's say the market makes a higher high here and the SPX VIX ratio makes a lower high then that's something to worry about but that we don't that hasn't happened yet because the S&P has not made a higher high so that's something worth watching as we go forward here but I do think we're uh, on intermediate term scale here there's nothing to really worry about there's not anything that's jumping out at me that this is a major top and we're going to go down and and split in half the market nothing like that matter of fact uh, as we get going here i'm probably saying they're probably making a load today so let's go to chart three okay 
We're up. All right, it's chart three. The bottom window is the uh, uh, NYSE advancing issues divided by the NYSE total issues, and you take a 10-day average of that. And what you're going to come up with uh, is, a, is a zwag breast thrust indicator, and that is when the readings hit below uh, 0.4, which we did yesterday. We hit 0.35 on the close. And if that market, and if, if this uh, racial analysis, this, the NYSE advance uh, divided by the total, and to take a 10-day average of that, if that reaches 0.6 within the next 10 days, they call that a zwag breast thrust indicator and suggest a bull move and a market's coming. So in the next 10 days, if we get a reading above 0.6, uh, then I think we'll have a, a, a rally that's similar that was started last October, uh, pretty much straight up again. So I think this is just a minor sideways pattern. It hasn't happened yet, but this next rally in the next 10 days, which is basically two weeks from today, if we're at 0.6 or higher, then we're going to have a, a real significant move coming over the summer. So we'll have to wait and see if that develops, but I'm just putting that out right now, something I'll be watching for, because we did get the oversold condition. Now we need to get to to 0.6 to see if that happens in the next 10 days. Um, I think the market actually has capabilities of doing that. We'll have to wait and see, though. Let's move on to chart four. Okay. Yep, I have chart four up now. Uh, Chart four, this is the... um, uh, Second window up from the bottom is the SPX VIX ratio again. And every time you get below the lower Bollinger Band, which we did yesterday, and the last time we did that, came at the October low. And the time before that, uh, there was a minor low in 2000. October 2000 looked like 21. Uh, but anyhow, when, the, when that ratio gets way below its lower Bollinger Band, you're always looking for a low. So we're probably in the vicinity of a low according to the VIX type indicators. So that's one reason why I'm bullish here. Uh, yeah, we got the sound coming on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and oh. I, I want to talk a little bit more on chart form when we get back. Um, you know, right now we're trading the ES Mini at 5101. Let's see what we get when we uh, come back. Tim, stay right there. All right. Yeah, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers <coughs> options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. 
TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We're with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, before we went to the break, we were talking about uh, some potential botany, bottoming patterns in the SPX. You know, work on the diction. Uh, Tim Ord, are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Fantastic. So we're on chart four right now. Right. Chart four, uh, basically, if you look at the bottom window, is, is I put a Bollinger Band on the VIX, mm -hmm. and anytime you get above the upper Bollinger Band or actually below the Bollinger Band on a closing basis, the market is it's going to reverse. And that's what we had yesterday. You can look over to the prior right window. You can see you're above the upper or the upper Bollinger Band on the SPX VIX ratio since it flips it upside down. Right. You're below it. So, you know, it, what happens, you've gone down too fast. So I do a lot of stuff with the VIX because it really gives a good indicator. If it goes too fast one direction, a lot of times it's re reverse. So the other, uh, let's go to chart five and I do it some other ways too. I, I, I measure the acceleration of the VIX in like three different ways. Uh, the top window is the VIX, next window down is the SPX. Uh, or the SPY. Next window down is percent B for the uh, VIX. Mm -hmm. And the next window down below that is the rate of change of the VIX. And the bottom window is the RSI for the VIX. So what that what those three indicators do is measure the velocity of the VIX. So if it kind of just gradually goes up, usually that's a death sign for the market. If it just rockets up, it's just it's got up too fast, too quick, and it's going to reverse. And I got circled uh, three, uh, uh, those three indicators I have circled, and they all reached, you only need two out of three, but all three reached, uh, um, I guess, bullish levels on yesterday's close. So they all kind of, the VIX just went up too fast. It actually kind of surprised me yesterday was down. But it does, market does what it does. But this is another indicator, so you're probably at a low here. Um, um, you know, today. So let's go down to it. Yeah. So there's multiple indicators yeah. essentially suggesting that we might be making a bottom at this level. Yeah, we're, we are making a bottom at this level. Yeah. So the, uh, I do a lot of stuff with the VIX. So let's go down to the daily charts and really get down to the nitty gritty. And um, the bottom window is just the five day arms that uh, yesterday reached 1.2. And the next window up is the VIX. You can see a lot easier there where the VIX closed, you know, 50% of its trading range closed above the upper Bollinger Band yesterday. And that's a sign. And also, if you look at the volume, which is the next window up, this is a volume of the SPY. We broke below the previous low. If you see those blue circles on the SPY, or the blue circles on the volume issue. The previous low, that was back on March 15th. I have it circled in blue there. And that was the last low. We broke that low yesterday, and I didn't do the exact calculations, but you broke that previous low about 15% lighter volume. If you break it on equal or greater volume, that means the decline is uh, is going to keep going. In other words, that was a legitimate break to the downside. If you break it on 10% or lighter volume, that means a false break to the downside. So we have a false break to the downside. And so that means at some point we're going to reverse back upside, reverse back upside again. And today, if you look at volume right now, uh, this chart's several hours old, but volume is going to come in 
at least 20% lighter than yesterday. So the market really doesn't have energy to push below yesterday's low. It's trying to do it, but you need at least equal volume yesterday to push below yesterday's low. We're not going to be near it. And when I made this chart, the trend was 1.61, and right now we're at 1.43. Anything below, uh, anything above 1.2 is bullish. So you're probably making a low. If the market can't take out the previous low with volume, which is yesterday's low, it'll, at least it'll reverse, take out the previous high, which is yesterday's high. So that'd be the minimum. But if you close above yesterday's high, you also close above the March 15th. Um, previous low, which is, a, I hope I'm getting not too confusing here, no, but no. the March 15th low, if you close above that low, it gives the previous high back at the, uh, you know, all, looks like about 524 up there. So um, I hope that's getting not too confusing here. I'm probably going too fast, but there's a lot of things too. And you, also, if you look, I got the Bollinger's band on the SPY there, if you see that. Yep. And if you if you notice, we closed below that Bollinger Band uh, yesterday, also, which is another kind of exhaust move to the downside. Mm. So we're not going to go lower here. We're making a bottom. Uh, if we're going to go lower, today's volume should be at least equal to yesterday's volume. But we're not even going to come close to that. Sure. So uh, I'd say expiration week, which is this week, is going to be an up week. Will we get back to the old highs? I don't know if we got enough time to do that. But at minimum, we get back to yesterday's high. That would probably be the minimum. Uh, so then from there, we'll have to wait and see. But I think we're making a worthwhile low here. Yeah. And usually April, of all the months of the year, uh, November is the best month. The second best month is April. Uh, so we're seasonality-wise, we're in actually a, a good month. I think by the end of April, we'll be back up to the old highs, if not breaking to new highs. So there's there's not the start of a, a big decline here. There's there's enough exhaust moves to the downside to suggest we're we're making a, a minimum and a short term low. It could be an intermediate term low. It depends how the market responds over the next two weeks, and that's judged by the uh, Zwag breath stress indicator. If we get above 0. 0.6, then I think we're going to have one heck of a good you know probably April, May, and June. Uh, Maybe even in July, we'll have to wait and see. So uh, this is a regular kind of a consolidation or an uptrend is what what this is all about. Yeah. Well, we get down to that gap around that 500 area, according to what's going on now, I don't think so. So uh, I have that gap there. If you look at the left part of the chart on the SPYs there, I have, I have a gap label there. A lot of times gaps are, are get filled and uh, – Maybe it will, but it might be later this year. So we'll have to wait and see. But not all gaps get filled. Some people say, yeah, all gaps get filled. They don't. So, But volume, if today's volume is going to be light. I think uh, this is probably uh, uh, expiration week will be an up week. So Fantastic. we'll have to wait and see. Well, Pardon? then I think we have, um, you know, we, we have a little bit left in this segment and a short one afterwards, but I see you have some stuff with gold. Uh, which I personally right. am interested in. See so where you're looking at it. Uh, of course, I was saying at the beginning of the show, Citigroup had increased its target, uh, at least in 2025, around 2,800. Uh, so I'm curious to see what you kind of have looking at uh, gold. Okay. Uh, uh, do we got time to start covering it now? What, 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 we have about 20 seconds right now, and then when we get back from the break, we'll have about three minutes. Um, okay. So what do we have... The weekly GDX seven. and then the other one, right? Well, yeah. Why don't Why don't we okay. just start talking a little bit about uh, seven? We can talk a little bit when the uh, music begins as well. So, okay. So we want to start now. Well, <laughs> I think the music is about to start right now. So you stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ward. Right. We'll talk a little bit about gold uh, when we come back from the break. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, 
and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv welcome back folks this is jacob shoop with tim Ord. before we went to the break uh starting to look at gold we have a short segment gold is currently uh trading at 2406 I uh, kind of want to see what you're looking at with it there, Tim. All right. Far as uh, uh, this, this chart number seven, yep. uh, the bottom window is the uh, cumulative advanced decline on the weekly time frame. Next window up is the cumulative advanced, or, or excuse me, the bottom window is the cumulative up-down volume on the weekly time frame. The next window up is the cumulative advanced decline for GDX. It needs to close above the mid-Bollinger Band. And as of today, this week's not over yet, but as of today, we're above that mid-Bollinger band. So if this actually gives a signal, a lot of these signals last you know, a year or one and a half years, sometimes even longer. The last signal was generated was back in January 2021, pretty much stayed on a sell signal until right now. So if, if this, if the market can remain you know, sideways or higher here this week, that that's bicycle will remain in force. Uh, so let's look, see where we are right now on a daily part. That's good chart eight. All right. And uh, uh, this this just measures uh, it's the bottom window. It's just the 18-day average of the up-down volume. Next window higher is the 18-day average of the advanced decline. So it's like three, a little over three weeks of data. So bicycles occur, which is basically a blue area on the chart, when both those indicators are above minus 10. As long as those two indicators stay above minus 10, the uptrend's intact. What I'm thinking is going on here is a five-way count up. 
actually we're pretty much high. We're up around plus 10 on both of them in that vicinity. So this is not really even getting close to a sell signal. But I think in the Elliott Wave, uh, five patterns up, we're in wave four right now. That's on the GDX chart I got it marked. So I think five wave is to come probably in the next several days. So that's my view. Fantastic. Tim, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, you will be on Thursday as well with Tom, and we're really looking forward to that. So, All right. Guys, Talk that was Tim then. Ord of the OrdOracle.com, Ord-Oracle. Check it out. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we will have Tom on tomorrow, which you definitely don't want to miss because we have a special guest, and we have usual programming uh, throughout the rest of the day. Thank you very much.